Ciao ragazzi, in today's video myself and Bill Almarza are going to react in as 2-1 Milan Derby defeat to AC Milan this evening. Before getting into the video be sure to let us know down in the comments below what you made of the match and don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on push notifications so you never miss a video. What did you make of the first half then Bilal? Yeah, Cammy, thank you so much for having me on. What an exciting first half it was between Inter and AC Milan and the Derby going into this game. Um, we knew both sides were missing some key players. Uh, Revic was missing for AC Milan. He's been a handful for any opposition this season, and um, he was going to be a big miss. Uh, for Inter as well, missing half your defense. Uh, Skriniar, Bastoni, we saw both of them when they played together with De Vrij, uh, against Lazio. Our defense was much more stable, uh, but with due to the injuries, um, Conte was forced to play uh, the same defense back three that he played against Fiorentina in the season opener. We saw horrific defense there and the same thing continued here. In the first half, Kolarov's positioning was absolutely horrendous. In the first goal that was allowed, he again showed the abilities of going forward, but when it comes to tracking back, he's way too slow to track back. He cannot play left center back as he is a wing back. He needs to be conscious of the fact that his defenses are his responsibility as well. He was unable to track back and he lost the race to Ibrahimovic and they're two of the slowest people on the pitch. And again, in that situation, if you're going to foul him, don't wait until he enters the penalty box. That was just idiotic on Kolarov altogether. Um, and clear penalty, no question, VAR checked it. It was a right call. Ibra converted. Handanovic saved the first opportunity, but uh, rebound went straight to Ibra and put it away. Nothing Handanovic could have done about that. At that point, the nerve started to show up a little for a bit for Inter, trying to get even uh, committing men forward, ended up allowing a run uh, into the box, uh, uh, to the far uh, far left post actually from Liao, who crossed the ball in to the far right uh, for Ibrahimovic. And in that situation, Kolarov again, losing Ibrahimovic inside the box is absolutely criminal for a defender. You need to track back and be able to know where the positioning is. Absolutely horrific defense from Kolarov and Inter in that situation. And an easy tap-in for Ibra, he's never going to miss that. However, before the end of the half, Perisic being brilliant in the attack as we expect him to be, he crossed the ball in, Lukaku easy tap-in, Inter down by a goal going into the halftime. Milan started the second half very defensively. Very few frees forward from them. It was mainly us, primarily through Ashraf Hakimi that was doing all the attacking. Although we found difficulties in having success and ultimately we wouldn't have any success on the goal scoring front in the entirety of the second half. Milan were kind of filling the box, they were keeping a lot of people in the central kind of area of the pitch and this meant that we had to rely on crosses into the box and as I said, we just weren't getting much success with that. Whilst Hakimi was doing really well, getting past his man plenty of times and getting balls in, unfortunately there was just nobody to get on the other end of these balls and we couldn't get another goal to tie things. Christian Eriksen came on for Marcelo Brozovic during the second half and Eriksen actually came on a lot sooner than perhaps he would usually have come on. Obviously during the international break he has complained about his lack of playing time and how much of this factor didn't take on his decision to bring him on sooner, I'm not all that sure. But Eriksen for me, I thought he was going to come on, provide a lot of creativity, something that we were lacking. We needed kind of someone to cut Milan open but... Eriksen just didn't do that unfortunately, we really struggled to break Milan down and all credit to them, they they defended really well, they, they got their lead and they implemented the game plan that uh, Stefano Pioli had for them excellently in my opinion, so yes it's a, not an ideal result whatsoever, this was a game that you're, you're never wanting to lose and when you lose matches it's always bad but it's even worse when it's a derby match, now we've certainly got to just kind of get over this immediately, we can't really afford to be resting on this or thinking too much about it. We've got another game in a few days' time against Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Champions League and we'll certainly want to start the group stage in the best way possible for a win. So hopefully we look at the game tomorrow or on Monday, examine things, go over it and then learn from this. The defence, I felt, was a bit better in the second half than it was in the first half. Obviously we never conceded again. Danilo D'Ambrosio was skint a good few times by Rafael Leal before he was substituted. Um, the defence didn't really give up too much in the second half and it's a pity that they couldn't have played kind of on this level throughout the game. The two goals that we conceded, as Bilal said earlier, were, were really down to poor defending and it is a sore one that that is what has cost us on this occasion. Moving on then to the top and flop section for the video. The top for me is a mix between Ashraf Hakimi and Romelu Lukaku. Now, Hakimi I felt was a threat throughout the match. He was putting on a lot of good balls, getting himself really far forward, attacked well, defended well and more often than not he got the better of 
of his man Teo Hernandez, who he also played a, a very good game actually. Um, Hakimi tried his best. He had a really good chance to draw his level with a header. There was a chance for him to maybe head it down to Lukaku, but I'm, I'm in two minds how e- about how easy that would have been for him. He could have headed it, and it could have went right past Lukaku, or he could have headed it too hard, and Lukaku could have struggled to control it. So I can certainly understand why he went for the header, and it's it's disappointing that he never managed to get it just a few inches, kind of the other side of the post, and it would have been 2-2 two, two, two at that stage. As for Lukaku, I felt he was absolutely unstoppable in the first half. Milan just simply couldn't contain him. He was causing all sorts of problems for them, and and got that goal. Unfortunately, things didn't go quite as well for him in the second half. Um, Milan done really well to stop him. He would get past one man uh, uh, quite a few times, actually, but then there was always another man that was was there to stop him. He had a few good chances, had a back heel right at the very death of the game that, I mean, on another day, it could have went a few inches either side and it could have been a goal, but, yeah, I, I, obviously a poor second half performance, but a really good first half performance that I certainly think warrants praise. What about the flop for the match then, Bilal? What what did you think was the flop? For me, the flop of the match has to be the VAR. Uh, there was not enough substance in that second half penalty call uh, to turn it over. In that case, Kiaier was um, considered to have unintentionally played the ball to Lukaku, who was in an offside position in that case. Uh, but intention should not matter, in my opinion, in that case, simply because you have seen number of occasions where referees have awarded the penalty to the opposition even when ball comes unintentionally off of the defender's hand. A penalty is a penalty in that situation, so why is it intention is considered in this case? I am not sure. Uh, and ultimately, that did cost us the point, maybe not the game itself, because we did miss out on a number of scoring opportunities on our own, but it did make a big difference in my, in the match. 